We're here in Plainfield and behind me is the Great Brook. The floods of July 10th decimated this village. And across the state, the Montours are recovering again on the anniversary of last year's floods. You know, what do you grab when you don't know how long you have and don't know that you're not coming back, right? I thought there's no way the building's gonna fall in the river, right? For 140 years, this building has withstood every flood until this one. The complete loss of, the, of two thirds of the building, it's very likely that nothing will be rebuilt here. In fact, this structure will be taken down. And as just part of the recognition that like, sh we should not be living in the floodplain, this building has seen, this would be the third flood that the building has seen in 12 months. The town is amazing. They really save people's lives in this flood. It's very important for everyone to understand that this is a paradigm shifting event. I've heard from reliable contractors that this event, if everything were to be repaired, would cost eight to 12 to 15 million dollars. Our annual budget is 1.4 million dollars. That's our annual budget. We have a temporary bridge being set up there, but the Mill Street Bridge, it's gone. I think that some people say it smashed into the heartbreak. This all happened because the bridge plugged. If the trees hadn't plugged the bridge, this pool that you see wouldn't be here. But our house is low enough just to hold a huge tank of pool water, which surrounded our house, which has never happened before. The pressure and the cutting off the edges, eventually the bridge went. And when that went, all this water rushed, took out the heartbreak, and the damage has been going downstream since. This community, I'm fed, I'm housed. I want to stay, and I want to know how I can stay. Uh, you know, people have lost everything. So what to do? We're a strong community, and we're, there's a lot of uh, people joining in. There are going to be, you know, depending on what the funding response is, there are going to be some tough choices made. Well, it started uh, to be a little settlement back in the 1700s, and it was picked, this spot was because of the mill location on the Winooski. Most people's houses, though, were in the hills. And then there was the village, which was where a lot of the workers lived and like heartbreak. It's been called the heartbreak since like the 20s when it was for mill workers, at least according to the Plainfield Historical Society, who were down on their luck. The house was built in like 1880 and then the back was like they had uh, stables and then they were making carriages and it was added on a number of times. Eight apartments is a bigger, it's one of the larger apartment buildings in town. It was an iconic place, a landmark, and we as neighbors really all supported each other. Honestly, just really confusing <laughs> trying to look back on that night. Got the alert on my phone that I was in a flood, a flash flood zone. I was like, okay, I'm panicking. I don't know what to grab. I'll pack as if I'm going away for a week. Maybe 9.30, maybe 9-ish, uh, the, the water hit. The water came up high enough that it started hitting the bridge and started getting stuff jammed against the bridge and then it started flowing around the bridge, right, and, and around the front of the building. It went from ankle deep water and, and all the neighbors walked out of the building to knee deep water and, it, and, and logs floating through. If you walked in and fell down, you would be swept into the river so fast and you would die so fast. Yeah, I wish I had gotten the cats out and just put them loose in the cars. Those poor cats, yeah. The smell was wet dirt, right? Trees coming down, you can hear the trees cracking and falling in along the banks down here, and then boulders rolling on the bottom of the, of the creek. Still didn't think the building would fall in until it did, until there was just like a crack and a crumble and it it was gone. Um, really grateful that everybody in the building was out. Nobody died, and I'm really grateful for that. Now we're walking around five miles from our house in these fields of muck. 
I found the first chair that I ever made, which is massive, right? So, so ridiculous, so random. So yeah, this is where I used to hop down to the water. But I just say, this losing your home when you have something 16 years, our daughter grew up here her whole life, she's 12 now, and you have this place you call home and it's just not even recognizable. We put so much of our art and time and love into the house. I was looking at the rain, it was, I mean, it was just torrential, it was so loud, it was raging and you could hear the boulders crashing and I said, um, we're gonna pack a bag and go. First time homeowners in Vermont, loving Vermont and suddenly poof. <laughs> and so in, in three hours, poof, it's crazy. I had to walk down here, the roads are all closed. Everybody has to band together, but get the word out to the politicians. They have to do something now. And where is FEMA? This is an absolute catastrophe. This is a disaster area, if I have ever seen one. I and I live through Sandy. Sandy. That's like two more steps down there. The water came in here and you can see it broke all the windows, pushed in those door, that door over there. And uh, volunteers dug this place out, but that was, you know, maybe, a, maybe at most a foot away from the ceiling. But then, yes, they've tunneled. They've tunneled. This is how high it still is. But they dig down to get to our electrical boxes. Our water mains down there. Next time the river is going to rise, it's just going to, there's nothing. There's nothing stopping the next one. It's just going to go up. Well, the force of nature is absolutely amazing. So I used to have a backyard. I have lived here for 46 years and I raised my kids here. This is not the first flood. This is the worst flood I've been through. For me, up to this, po up to this point, I have felt it's been worth it to recover uh, because I love this town. I love the village. I love the spot. I love the brook. I have to prepare myself to come here to see this because it's distressing and it's sad and uh, it's also amazing because I am so moved by the people who are helping me. They just started digging out the basement dirt, the mud. Thank you so much for coming. There was an upper balcony and a downstairs very nice deck and a pantry that all got ripped off along with a, a retaining wall that went out that held my yard. I mean, I don't even know yet all the things that are missing. The amazing thing is my first floor didn't really flood. I'm hoping to be able to live back here, uh, at least for a year. Uh, we'll see. I just don't think I'll ever feel safe here. The brook has grown much wider and our bridges have stayed narrow. I trust somehow our town will come together and find solutions. There's a number of houses here um, as you go both on Hudson Street and then also on the Brook Road where folks are not coming back. They've said it pretty clearly. And so we're at a point in town um, where we've had some really good discussions with the select board about how do we maintain the integrity of the village while also removing houses from the floodplain that at this point, if we're sane and rational about it, they shouldn't be here. If we talk about adapting to climate change, that means doing some, making some tough decisions, and some of those are not rebuilding. People say nothing plain about Plainfield. <laughs> People are a little quirky, and it's, you know, this is how we are and who we are. And... It's a small town, and people care for their neighbors, and that feels really nice. It's nice to be a neighbor here. I hope it continues to thrive and be dynamic and a wonderful place to live. It's okay, we're gonna get through it. Thanks to everybody who's been helping. I know you're tired Vermonters, I know you have flood fatigue, but hang in there. Hopefully more help is on the way. Take care everyone. Just walking around Plainfield, seeing all the devastation and beautiful historic homes ripped up by the river and or brook it's a brook just my heart hurts it's just <sighs>